Hello and welcome to another episode of Dota 2 Mechanics. Buyback is a unique feature in Dota compared to other MOBAs. As far as I know, the other MOBAs don't have it. Buyback has a cooldown of 8 minutes. When you buyback, the next time you die, your respawn timer will have an additional 25 seconds added to it. If you die to neutrals in the early game, your respawn timer will be 26 seconds. This is irrelevant after level 6, since your respawn timer is bigger than 26 seconds. The last relevant thing to know about buyback is the buyback cost. It scales based on net worth. The formula for buyback cost is 200 base cost plus your net worth divided by 13. Here are some examples of buyback costs with certain net worths. There is also reliable and unreliable gold, but considering how you currently get gold, it is not that relevant. So I'll leave this text here that explains it if you are curious. Base attack time. You've for sure heard of it or seen it in your Dota 2 experience. But what is it? Well, it's basically the amount of time it takes a hero to hit once with an attack speed of 100. So let's handle the attack speed part first. Most heroes have 100 base attack speed, except for a few exceptions. Well, more like 20. So now that we have the information that most heroes have 100 or around 100 base attack speed, that means that if their base attack time is 1.7, it takes them 1.7 seconds to hit once. All of this is without agility being taken into account, which is why some heroes may seem to hit a lot faster without items at level 1, like Jug. Okay, now that we somewhat understand what base attack time is, it's time to get into the relevant part. Some heroes have a better base attack time than average, while others have a worse one, as you can see here. Now, what that means is that the heroes with lower base attack time benefit more from attack speed than a hero with 1.7 base attack time. So if you look at anti-major juggernaut with 1.4 base attack time, their attack speed bonus is around 20%. So if you were to buy a moonshard which gives 140 attack speed, they would actually get around 168 attack speed from it. This works the other way for heroes like Hoodwink. A moonshard or Hoodwink gives only around 120 attack speed. There are a few more relevant base attack times to remember the most important one being Alchemist, where his level 3 ult makes him have a base attack time of 1, which means he gets around 56% more attack speed for every 1 attack speed. So a Moonshard on Alchemist with level 3 ult gives him around 210 attack speed instead of 140. Also, Troll and Terrorblade get base attack time benefits when uh, they enter their forms, which is Metamorphosis for TB and Melee form for Troll. The last base attack time change that exists for heroes is Broodmother, level 25 talent. Which is a pretty decent talent, but nobody plays physical damage Brood, so it kinda doesn't matter. There is also Lone Druid, whose bear's base attack time scales with levels of the bear, as well as with the talent. But the talent is pretty irrelevant, especially considering the bear has no agility or attack speed gain, except for the Lone Druid passive. And that's base attack time in 2 minutes or less! Now that we went through some difficult mechanics that hurt your head, let's go back to something simple and chill. Whenever you hit uphill, there is a 25% chance to miss. When hitting heroes or creeps while having some sort of true strike, like MKB or Maelstrom, you will not miss when you proc the items. However, the true strike does not work on buildings, so sieging high ground with a ranged hero, like Sniper, will always result in 25% of your hits missing, which is also another reason why Arc Warden's Field is the strongest high ground defense spell in the game because it just makes you have a 100% miss chance while sieging unless you are in the bubble. Fuck Arc Warden and Arc Warden players. While we're on the topic of uphill, an honorable mention is how fog works when hitting enemies or casting spells. If you cast a targeted spell on an enemy creep or hero, you will be revealed for around 1 second. The same goes for auto attacks. AoE spells, however, or spells that are not targeted, like heat seeking missile from Tinker or raises from SF, do not reveal where you are. This is one of the reasons a Tinker players do not use laser in fights, because on top of needing them to come close to cast a spell, they also reveal themselves and are therefore vulnerable. This isn't really that hidden of a mechanic, but I think a lot of people still might not know it, so I hope it's helpful. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is creeps. Creeps in Dota upgrade every 7.5 minutes. 
they basically get 1-2 more damage, 10 HP or so every upgrade, but the really relevant upgrade is the gold. Not the melee creeps though, they only increase in bounty by 1 gold uh, per 7.5 minutes, but the range creeps increase by 6 gold per upgrade, which adds up quite a lot in the late game. So better lasted those range creeps, eh? Also, it is worth mentioning that every 15 minutes, the amount of creeps in a wave increases by 1, as you can see in this picture from the Dota Wiki. Thank you for watching, hope you found it helpful, and remember that whenever you have a Dota question, Dota Wiki has the answers.